Riza Islam. Welcome back. I never knew TV. Yes, sir. Good to be back. All right, serious thing, man. We're going to get right into it, right? I want to get into your uh, a segment from your book, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about Samuel Cartwright's theory called, and excuse me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, Drapetomania. Oh, yeah, Drapetomania. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. All right, so um, uh, it was considered a mental illness to run away from slavery, right? Correct. All right. But the reason I brought it up was um, when reading your book, I was really thinking like, man, we really we have to acknowledge the role sexism, classism and racism plays in the field of psychiatry. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you have these people who have these issues with certain groups creating this idea of how we analyze the mind, won't it be skewed based on the, the isms that they have? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you know that? Psychiatry was declared uh, one of the architects of racism by the World Health Organization, I believe, in the 1960s. I believe it was the World Health Organization that declared psychiatry as, quote, the party that cultivated racism. They acknowledged how horribly influential psychiatry was involved when it comes to racism. You brought up Samuel Cartwright who said that slaves who run away from slavery have a mental disease. They quite literally said, if that Negro, or they use the real, the heavy ER, if he is trying to run away, there's something wrong with him. There's something wrong with you because you don't want me to whip you or chop your foot off. You know, there's something wrong with you. How the hell is it that today people can say pretty much anything that they want to say to a degree? But the higher up you go in class, since you brought classism up, the less people speak the truth. The more money they get, the less they'll speak the truth. Because nine times out of 10, they get it through sports, they get it through some type of you know, field or endeavor when it comes to how this system works. They speak less truth, they have more money. So now they have this class circumstance going on. Racism is never going to be inseparable. You can be a billionaire, let racism hit you. Kanye West, for example, it don't matter. You will get hit. That still has power. And of course, the sexism plays a role because now there is still a dominant of men, but now there are certain men trying to put women in a certain position to be dominant as a front to make it seem as though they care about women and women's rights and all of that. And there's a whole layer cake of where we're going in when it comes to this. But as a part of all of that, classism, racism, and sexism, psychiatry, and those who control the minds will always have the superior control. That's my point. It don't matter where you go in any of these areas, these layers, these endeavors, any one of these people can be taken off to a mental facility with simply a nod from a psychiatrist. Any one of these people can be declared crazy, have their money removed, their family removed, their entire career destroyed. Any one of these people can be put permanently in that area. Oh, that's her. Oh, he one of those. Simply by being declared mentally unstable you know, schizophrenic, depressive, all of these things, brother, because of labels that were manufactured and manipulated by a group of people who are not even qualified to tie their own damn shoes. And I'm talking to the American Psychiatric Association. You talking about some of the most wicked, evil, insane people on the planet who are controlling the mindsets of everybody else on the planet. And I, I saw this when I was teaching, and I'll never forget this. They had a, a particular student who was very uh, active, I would say, right? And uh, so one day I saw them just staring and a little drooling going on. It wasn't nothing extreme, but he was just basically staring. He was very sedated. So I asked the counselor what was up, and they said they increased his medication. And fire, this is a scary thing. I'm talking about a kid that had a lot going on. Then I, I guess, uh, you know, they, they spoke to the parents, then they reduced it, then his behavior came back. But I was just I was just observing the fact that just by increasing uh, his dosage, what it did to him, he would just sit there and stare. Yeah. He said nothing. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. That's the solution. Remember this. Um, when you want to control an animal. Right. Just just so you know, what, let's go back historically so we can understand where this stuff even came from. When they couldn't control people. They will put them in cages, right? As far as slavery, they will put us in chains, cages, all these things when they couldn't control us. They classified us as animals. You had certain psychiatrists who started to develop 
techniques that they refer to as breakthrough techniques. Uh, for example, when it comes to ECT or electroconvulsive therapy or electroshock, that was developed by these Italian brothers who were slaughtering pigs. They were, you know, in the farming industry and they wanted to slaughter pigs. So they would put these two metal bars on the side of a pig's head and shock the pig so that it could become more docile. It'll fall right over. It wouldn't die. It wouldn't, they wouldn't kill them, but it, they would be able to slaughter the pig easier because it could no longer kick around and move around, etc. That developed and evolved into, from the electroshock, into the psychotropic drugging pills that are being used by over half a million children, by over, I believe, over 100, no, pardon me, over a million children easily, and over 100 million people in America currently right now are on one or more forms of these psychotropic drugs. It is a way to control the masses of people because we can't control them anymore. So with students in classes, they just say, here, give them a drug. They get paid more money to put them on a drug. The more drugs they put them on, they get more money for that. Special education gets roughly double than that of the standard education. So it's money, money, money. Then we can control the child. Then after five years, just so you know, if they're on these drugs, they will no longer qualify for a government job or qualify for a majority of jobs and get disqualified for a number of other things because they will be deemed mentally unstable for the rest of their life. But the, the thing I'm trying to figure out is that like, I guess, the, I guess this ties into a population c control we're gonna talk about later. Cause like, you're setting people up not to be an asset to society, not to be able to function in society. So what do you plan on doing with them? Brother, that's a question that was posed to Congressman Dan Burton years ago when he brought up the example of autism, the skyrocketing explosion of autism. And he was asking these people, these pharmaceutical reps, these questions. He said, okay, so you're saying that these shots don't cause autism, okay. You're saying it has nothing to do with anything that you are pumping out into these children. None of the drugs, none of the shots. He said, these children are gonna get older. They're not gonna die. We have to pay for everything that they have going on. Their medical care, health care, their everyday management, meaning the people who work with them, the special, the special you know, uh, assistance for these adults, these children in adult bodies. You, he said, this is crippling crippling those who pay taxes. And he said, you mean to tell me that the pharmaceutical companies have nothing to do with this? Nothing. He said, we need to question what the hell your role is really and start to investigate what these drugs are doing, what these shots are doing and a bunch of other things because you are creating generations of children that will no longer be able to contribute to the progression of society. And what will be the last decision to make, my brother, if you have a bunch of adults or children, again, in adult bodies who can't do anything, they can't talk, they can barely walk, they're not gonna be able to drive, they're not gonna be able to get married really and have a, you know, children and have a real engaged life, where are they gonna go? That's when the conversation of depopulation comes in because now that's a part of it. Well, let's see if we can just get rid of these human beings. That's one of the areas and that's not a, it's not a far-fetched thing, this ain't no damn theory. This is a reality, brother, but they're crippling society in order to get rid of society. It goes back to history when it comes to the feeble-minded undesirables, which are terms that were properly utilized in eugenics, where they were saying, get rid of these human beings. Remember, the sterilization movement had uh, agreements in over 30 of the states in the United States. They were using sterilization techniques legally, right? So that, that whole circumstance is very real, and it's a silent thing that a lot of people, they're not hearing too much of right now. But you got millions of people on the spectrum, brother, when it comes to autism, and then you have all these other people that are handicapped, then you have all these healthy children that are just being doped up every day, and they are not able to live a natural, healthy life. And people talking about, oh, Johnny crazy. Oh, a little sis is crazy. She didn't take her meds. She didn't take her meds. He didn't take his meds. It's a, it's a culture now by these evil, wicked bastards who are not even close to being qualified to govern anybody, but they said, we, we found a way to drug humanity into a position where they are docile, we can control them. The problem is it backfired because now this thing is going into generation after generation. Now the people who are supposed to be taking care of these elders who set this evil thing in play, not gonna be able to take care of them. 
So now, what's, what's about to happen now? You see what I'm saying? I guess, again, it's, it's a, a number of layers to this topic, but it's a very real situation, which is why we can't put our hands in, uh, we can't put our life in the hands of this system because they genuinely are trying to take us out. And uh, that segues into another question I have here. Um, in your book, Message to Millennials, anyone watching, if you don't have it, make sure you purchase it. Powerful read. Um, you speak about the mentality of the character Banos from the movie Avengers. Oh, yeah, Thanos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, being an exemplification of the world leaders who want to kill a large percentage of the population to save a small percentage of the population. Um, can you elaborate on uh, that idea more and why you use that as an example in your book? Absolutely. I had to bring that up because that is the ultimate agenda overall above every, everything else. They can't control the masses of humanity, so they are doing their best to now get rid of a large percentage of humanity. And they did a big test recently between 2020 and 2023, dealing with the quote unquote pandemic. They wanted to see how many people would run out and get something without having any information about it, any real science about it, any real proof that it works. No information about the ingredients, no information about long-term studies. They don't know a goddamn thing, but they'll take it. Let's see how many will fall for it. Let's see how many we have to force or how many we have to threaten their job, how many we have to threaten their education, their travel, their children's education. How many people can we get if we do all these different things and then eventually mandate it and force it and blah, 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 blah. Over 5.3 billion human beings on the planet took the first dose. Let me say that one more time. Over 5.3 billion human beings on the planet took the first dose. You're talking about over 65% of the population of the planet. So that was successful, let's make that clear. And if you start to look at the science and what has been coming out recently, it demonstrates exactly what their agenda was because the science is proving, people need to look at what Pfizer said in their trial data before the shots were released so that they know about the myocarditis, pericarditis, the miscarriages, the blowing up uh, explosion in cancers and all these other things tied to the shots before they were released to the public. I'll leave you to go look at the Pfizer data that was brought out by the Freedom of Information Act request. But they're looking at when we can't control the population, and this is not the only time this has been done, we have to enslave a certain percentage pay a certain percentage or those see who will be loyal to us and then get rid of the rest. That, that's really it. We need those who can work, those who will work for us, and then those who can control the slaves and then just get rid of the rest. That's where they are at this point. Thanos, his idea was I need to get rid of roughly 50% of the population of the universe so that the other 50% can thrive and succeed. So that there'll be enough food, enough water, enough space, enough room, that was crazy, <laughs> brother, that was insane. Because realistically, the planet, for example, just planet Earth has roughly 29 million useful square miles. But the vast majority of the population of humanity can fit in the state of Texas. And that's a fact. So that was an ideology that was pushed by a number of crazy people and then all the way up to Hillary Clinton, all the way up to George Soros, all the way up to Klaus Schwab, all the way up to Bill Gates and these, again, insane fanatics who then started to adopt it. And they're talking about now at the World Economic Forum, you will own everything. You know, we will own everything and you will control nothing and you'll love it. And, you know, those who don't want to comply, we're going to simply get rid of them or we're going to phase them out. People are going to get the chip, the RFID chip or the brain chip that Mr. Elon Musk is coming out with. Those who don't want to get it, well, you won't be able to live life normally because you won't have your digital currency. You won't be able to check in in certain places. Well, you can't get a house because you need your chip. Like this is where it's going. So it's either you comply with this or we're going to phase you out. And the only thing that's going to prevent this is by the people coming together and refusing to go along with it. I know a lot of people watch these interviews and they get tired of hearing the same thing. But you hear the same damn thing because you ain't changing your damn behavior. <laughs> you ain't changing nothing. Maybe if you got the hell up and started exercising and training and saying, you know what, let me stop going along with this nonsense. Maybe certain people won't repeat certain things. It has to be repeated so that you can get the hell up and change the direction. Certain people are, and I'm shout out to all of you who are actually doing something about it. But for the rest of the people, just make it clear if you're like, oh, I heard this before. Well, then get the hell up and do something. <laughs> It's real simple. 
facts and and i want to this i saw this thing recently is a super red flag to me um florida house passes bill that allows teens to work over 40 hours a week legally right mm. and i know teens work right and some i'm not sure if they're working 40 hours but they're definitely working more than they should now this is the thing i've been observing after i can't even say the word on here but you know what i'm saying after the thing mm -hmm. companies still to this day across industries still have uh hiring signs up a lot of stores that used to have a, a high population of elderly workers specifically uh supermarkets and walmart you know walmart you always had an older person at the front sometimes yep. with a disability but it was an older person right mm -hmm. what i'm noticing now is the demographic at these places have changed dramatically you don't see older people there anymore you don't see anyone 30 40 you see teenagers mm -hmm. so just from observation right i don't have any data any statistics just from observing with a functioning brain it seems like more people died during this occurrence than they're than, than they're letting on or people vanished or i don't know what occurred fire <laughs> but i know like things have changed i know mm -hmm. that like because you can't still be unable to find someone to work at this point after that event the science that has come out, there are new numbers. Japan has done a study. There are about six nations in Europe that have done studies, including Romania, including Spain, including Germany, including Italy. They have done multiple studies dealing with before and after these injections. What they have realized is, one, they were lied to, two, it was not safe and effective, three, there are so many problems that have arisen. They have now done dissections on a number of the bodies of people. And what they have demonstrated is the mRNA technology has gone all the way down to the level of the testes, to the sperm level, the ovaries of women, how far it penetrates into the body. It was everywhere. So it, it's not far-fetched, it actually happened. Number two, the number of deaths, they have done a number of recounts after the scientific data came out about blood clots, about all these different things, and they've connected it and had to go back now to see what the actual cause of this death was, that death was. The numbers have come out, some said 500,000 in America. Other numbers said over 2 million in America. Another study came out and said over 10 million. Now I'm just only talking about in America, from the shot, not because of the virus. And this is happening all over the world. So right now, people are starting to realize that, again, not only were they lied to, but the shots did the job. Many people are still alive. That's called individual susceptibility. Your body has a different set of chemistry versus anybody else. So there could be a number of reasons as to why certain people who took it are still alive. And this is not to scare anyone. You want to start detoxing. But the reality is a lot of people were taken out because of it. And that's the fact, brother. And this is coming out more and more. Mainstream media is not reporting on it, but world-renowned scientists are reporting on it. I'm getting this data all the time. And they know it's not being reported. It's being reported on places like Substack and Twitter and all these different areas by world-renowned PhD scientists, virologists, epidemiologists, cardiologists. They are talking about this data. And that's why a lot of people, brother, are gone left and right. People are having heart attacks in one week, I have a friend that lost three family members in one week, all had heart attacks. Three of them, or two of them, were under the age of 30. This don't make no damn sense. That's what's, that's what's trending right now. Heart attacks, cardiovascular fire, because like certain people, late 20s and 30s, just dropping dead out the blue, you know? Yeah, and we know heart disease, of course, is still the number one killer in America. We, now, we know that. We know that. Um, yeah. But not for people under 30. <laughs> like, let's make that clear. Not that's, for people that's the thing, the age, the demographic has changed dramatically. Yeah, it, it's, you know? it's changing. There's a lot of, a lot of other ingredients we know, um, but let's, let's stop playing these games. Let's stop playing these games, y'all. We have to in, actually investigate, at least be willing to look at it and say, okay, could this be? Is this a cause to the spike in that, and not only that, but the blood clots, but the Bell's palsy, but all of these other issues, um, the miscarriages. All of this was in the Pfizer data before the shots were released, by the way. Everyone needs to look at the Pfizer trial data from the shot. Pfizer trial data. The over 400 pages 
pardon me, over, four, over 400,000 pages, pardon me. <laughs> you need to look at all that data before you open your mouth and say anything. And um, we, we interviewed a guy, John Abramson, right? He's a whistleblower. And um, he was breaking down, like, how, first of all, how much money they made from uh, this situation. Seems Fauci like they made more royalties, money in this brother. time period than pharmaceutical companies made in, like, the last three decades combined. Mm -hmm. But um, the thing he was breaking down to me is that he was saying that doctors are, these peer reviews are all false because the real information is not in the peer review. So even if they review it, it's, it's, it's a, a, a false document they're getting because only time you get the real information is through uh, uh, if it goes to court and they have to release it. They hide a lot of stuff, right? Yes, it has to be. But the thing I was asking, yes. man, he, he was telling about these meetings, right? So basically they have these meetings and they're actually sitting and, and budgeting, you know, lawsuits, uh, they kind of have a calculation of deaths. So I don't know, man. I'm not a lawyer, but that's not like premeditated murder, or is it not? Because it's, it's kind of weird. Like if, you're, if, if I'm at a meeting saying, you know what, <laughs> we think 3,000 people are going to die after they take this, and we set aside a certain amount of money to deal with the – so that's not premeditated or Brother, is it not? Canada has paid out over $6 million to families who have proven that they were killed and are harmed by the shot. Uh, over in the United Kingdom, they have a compensation program for people who proved that the shot either harmed or killed somebody who they know, their family member, etc. Multiple nations currently are paying people money that proved that the shot did this to them. It's a fact. Can't nobody argue this now. It's a done deal. There are governments right now paying out money saying, you took that shot within the last three years, that experimental gene therapy, mRNA technology, can you tell us what it did? Can you tell us how you know? Boom, boom, boom. You fill out a full form. Brother, again, Canada over $6 million. The UK, I believe, is paying $150,000 US dollars, a one-time payment, if you can prove that it did something to you and or ended with somebody's life ending in your family or the person who you are over, their guardianship, they're paying that money out. It is a done deal. This is not a theory. <laughs> this is an actual fact. And people got to start looking at it now. Once you see it, then maybe you can turn around and say, you know what? Let me investigate, get an individual separate toxicology report, separate autopsy report, because these governments, brother, they're being held accountable. Fauci just got brought back again in front of Congress. <laughs> again, two weeks ago. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about here? This dude is a, a straight up criminal. And since you brought up premeditated murder, for them to know about this data, in the trials before any of these were injected into human beings publicly and they knew they knew all of those things that i mentioned to you what, what it was going to do here what it was going to do here what it was going to do it was in the trial data and they still pushed the shots absolutely premeditated murder definitely what what do you think about this is this body positivity culture <laughs> contributing to the obesity crisis plaguing our people and unhealthy eating habits plaguing our people Body. I've been observing. You know, I'm a man that observes society, and I know it's always been an issue, but it seems like it's getting out of hand, but more than anything, it's being justified and supported and praised almost, you know? And I just focus on the health issue. I don't even focus on the look. I'm focusing on the health. Absolutely. You know what, man? Somebody said this to me. They said, Reason, I don't understand this. When we were growing up, if you were fat, you were called fat. If you were, if you were skinny, you was called skinny. I was real skinny. I was a fat baby, let's just go through the transition. I was a fat baby, real fat, up until about the age of two or three, I was one of them chubby ones, right? And then it's like somebody squished me and then I got taller and got real slim. All right, then now I went from slim to now I got, you know, I'm in that, that man body phase, now I'm all muscular, you know, like 88% muscle and 12% body fat roughly, right? So it's like, okay, cool, we go through our changes. The reality is now, body positivity is a trend being put in the place of lack of discipline. If my sister is overweight, I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh yes, honey, yeah, you go. No, I'm gonna say no, plaque, uh, arteries is, is struggling right now. No, no ma'am, I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I don't need to insult you. Let's not get it twisted. See, that's the difference. We start, you know, getting into insulting people and you know, attacking their character. And No, you don't need to do that. Educate them. If you love somebody, you're going to tell them the truth. I want to see you around. Don't you want to be here? Ain't a damn thing positive about you having no high blood pressure, 
early onset diabetes, asthma. There's, no, there's nothing positive about that. I have a cousin, bro, who's my age, who was a track runner, who has diabetes. I don't understand that. We are in our 30s. This don't make no sense. Our elders were not dying until their late 80s, late 90s, and some into the hundreds or even you know, 120s, 130s. That was average. But you're telling me right now that body positivity is something that we need to embrace. No, go to hell. Because can't nobody else get out here in their culture and tell you we accept body positivity. That's not what they do. You sound crazy as hell. Get some discipline. Get the hell up. Get the fat off you. Put some muscle on. Eat healthier. Do what is right for your health or else you will not be here. You can't argue and justify with your personal health. That's, that's the problem, bro. We're trying to argue and justify with it like it's an opinion. It ain't no opinion. This is life. You need to get up and move the body because you already have a whole government trying to take you out. Stop taking yourself out with them. There, there are two things, man, you mentioned. One is accountability, which we don't want to hold ourselves accountable or hold anyone else accountable. And also, I think when people do speak about the, the weight, they do it from an immature standpoint and they don't focus on the fact that we want you around. At, at, we want you around to perform at your highest level for yourself and your family. Absolutely. That's the main thing. We want you around and the, the burden that sick people put on the family. I think people aren't aware of that when you're mm -hmm. not healthy, especially if you're a, a man and the leader of the household, it becomes a serious problem for you. Yes. Because you're no longer an asset, you're a liability. Your, your earning potential decreases tremendously. And also now, you're putting more financial strain on the family you should be helping. Man, good point. Very good point. See, now, okay, I'm going to do me. I'm expressing myself. See, let's, 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 let's dissect this nonsense real quick. The Caucasian culture, and I'm going to generalize it really quick. Anything that goes against logic, for the most part, was Caucasian cave dwelling mentality. Let's just make that very clear. And they justify by saying, I'm expressing myself. Okay, that's what mass shooters have said. That's what pedophiles say. That's what people who rape people say. I'm just expressing myself. I'm just being myself. No, no, no. You are being out of your mind. People have to stop adopting terminologies that go towards self-destruction. It's not body positivity. It's lack of discipline. It's not body positivity. It's self-hatred. It's not body positivity. It's lack of self-love. It's not body positivity. It's you embracing the lifestyle or death style of people who you look up to and follow who didn't even get those abs or those glutes naturally. They got it BBL injected. Stop it. This is where this goes now. You want to have a BBL life, which is a fake life. Dudes getting their pectoralis major muscles injected. Women getting their glutes injected. Men getting abdomen injections now to simulate abs. And a person who looks healthy, a lot of them looking healthy, looking fit, can't do a real squat, can't do a push up, and if they are in an emergency situation, they will not be able to do one pull up to save their goddamn life. And you are telling me that that's the mentality you want to adopt? Stop it. We gotta get away from this stuff, bro, because when we become liabilities, I was looking at movies, scary movies. I always look at the person who can't run away. I'd be like, and it's like 30 feet, and they can't run 30 feet. They breathing hard, or they trip, or they fall. And I'm like, man, we cannot, we cannot acknowledge mediocrity. We cannot acknowledge having terrible health and acknowledge not being fit and ready for any type of situation. Because if we acknowledge that, we're acknowledging and accepting our own destruction. We can't invite that in. And, and one point you brought up that we need to touch on before we move on is that you see, I understand the BBL, but I have uh, seen things online with these men getting some type of reconstructive surgery. And I don't see how that can provide confidence because the confidence comes from the work. Come on. <laughs> Your confidence comes from you putting in that work. So how can I be confident if I get a surgery? I defeated the whole purpose. Brother, it, I'm still going to lack confidence and self-worth. It's a cause. And I just spent all this money and I got this, this foolishness going on. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the microwave version of food. It's the Kool-Aid version of juice, right? It's fake, 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 fake. It looks good, it sounds good, it smells good, but it's not good. That hard work thing is something I, you know, in the recent years of me heavily being involved in fitness, for example, just, just as an example, I feel good knowing that I've earned where I am now. Like I can say I Say earned. that again, say the E word again, say the E word again. Oh man, brother, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I earned 
this. I can stand up boldly. See, you can't talk with bass in your voice if you didn't earn it. If you didn't earn it, you can't really stand on it. No, you can't. You can try. But people are gonna look at you and be like, man, knock it off. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we brother, we saw the we saw the surgery, bro. Like we understand. We understand. And no, no shade to anybody who has gotten surgery or any type of thing like that. Y'all know, but let me just be clear with y'all. There are nations of people who are currently preparing. And what do I mean? The world is in a position where we are potentially going right into World War III. Some say we don't already been in that, but I believe, yeah, it's, it's leaning into that arena. If stuff started to crack off right now, stuff popped off right now, the majority of people wouldn't be prepared. They wouldn't be ready. You can't run a half a mile, let alone a mile. You can't do three or four or five push-ups. The average man can't even do 10 pull-ups. Can't do five pull-ups, can't do three. Um, but you're talking so hard, walking so hard out here because you got money. Okay, that's cute. That's cute. But in reality, soldiers are the only ones who are going to survive or those who are well-trained. So that's why I don't get moved when I hear people doing all this talking. I did an episode on my podcast, the Intellectual Extremist Podcast, uh, recently where I talked about the health of the people. Do you know that the United States government on a list of 200 nations on the planet is ranked number 14 in obesity? 14. That's not a, that's not a shocker. Brother, that means there's only 13 nations worse when it comes to the overall health, but out of 200 nations on the planet, and China is one of the least when it comes to obesity. So I, I, I'm personally <laughs> shocked that we're not number one. I, bro, I'm telling you, but that we have to be humbled is my point. We have to really humble ourselves and, and jump out of this illusionary world, get off of social media, get back to reality. People talking real heavy on the internet cannot back up what they say. Take away the weapons Facts. and the money and they will not be able to back up a damn thing. Why you think your brother speaks so heavy? <laughs> like why? Because I know. Again, it's different when you really earn this stuff, man. I'm like, I know the body positivity comes about when you are positive that your body is functional and works properly and you're healthy and your mind is good, your brain, your nervous system, your immune system, it works well. You don't have too many issues. You, you can say, man, I can run, I can jump. If I need to protect myself, I can't. That's body positivity. But the rest of that nonsense is an illusion that people make to take the place of their irresponsibility, their lack of discipline, and their total evasion of accountability. Stop following celebrities who can't do more than you physically. I know a lot of them, and they are terribly horrible with their health. Please, yeah. like y'all gonna follow the people in, straight into hell. You're going to follow the wrong people. Black leaders, right? Uh, this is my observation. I want to hear what you have to say. It seems black people don't understand leadership, and we have unrealistic expectations of our leaders. They're almost looking like a God-perfect figure and not looking for a human figure. Uh, I know as a leader, though, I will say this. I think as a leader, you should be multidimensional. Absolutely. But you're not God, right? Mm -hmm. And an example I'll use is like Marcus Garvey, right? Mm -hmm. Um brilliant orator, a great organizer, but he probably wasn't the best businessman, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and mm -hmm. I think that, and I understand infiltration, we could go into the story, but I just feel that like we're not acknowledging the strong point of leaders and we're looking for leaders to do everything when that's not realistic. And leaders need to humble themselves and get help in areas where they need help. Absolutely. Throw that in there. Absolutely, well, it's mainly in our culture where we attack the people who are trying to help. It's mainly in our culture where we attack the people trying to help us, <laughs> attack the people trying to guide us, attack the people who are trying to warn us about an entity, a power, a government that is really trying to come and take us out, you know, deprive us of, you know, our livelihood, our education, whatever it is. We attack those people. Why? Because we don't want to change. And I'm going to say this. You don't want to be reminded of what the hell you know you need to be doing. We don't. We got too comfortable right now. Social media, bro, has spawned an entire generation of comfortable, mediocre people who think that clicking a button is the same as being active on the ground in real life. That clicking the button is equal to doing the real work. You brought up the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, brilliant orator, um, phenomenal organizer, 
um, a, a wonderful, he was wonderful at starting business and at least getting these things going, backing his words up. Same thing with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, getting them started, see at least getting it moving and having people that believed in the mission. Most of our people don't even know what mission is. We don't know what it means. We have no sense of that. You say mission, they say, oh, you on that woke stuff. Or, oh, here you go, black militant. Oh, you one of them black power. They call it hotep. They call it a bunch of weird Negroes on the goddamn internet who have watered down the spirit of actual revolutionary liberation. Negroes who are on YouTube. Shout out to YouTube. But you are not no damn activists for the majority of y'all who just talk and talk and talk. Then when you talk to them in person, they don't know history. They don't want to sacrifice nothing. They are comfortable getting those checks. Get your checks, nothing against that, but don't get your checks and talk down on people who refuse to get the check the same way you doing because they choose to do the real grassroots boots on the ground work. I always make sure, brother, to acknowledge both sides. If you're going to be talking, you might want to connect with the people who have been sweating, having blood sacrifice out here doing this work. Do not be out here talking as if because you have a million subscribers that that means you have a million people that are going to move if you give the order. Y'all don't have that. None of you have that. Not one of you. Okay? Say, say that again. I think that's the disconnect. Say that again. I think that's the total disconnect with the internet at all, whether it's influencer, artist, social commenter. Explain that again. Please. Just because you have a million subscribers to your channel does not mean you have a million followers, soldiers who are going to activate under your direction when you give an order. It does not communicate the same. They don't equate. They are not related the way you think. Marcus Garvey had soldiers. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad has soldiers. And these groups that were doing the work the reason why we still talk about these groups is because of how effective they were and or are. That's why we still talking about them, because of the work that was done, not the talking only, not just the cosmetic effect of what things look like, but the actual work that was done. People who could point a finger and the soldiers move, people who could say something and the soldiers activate it. That's different than us making a post or a video. It, it's, it's a part of it. That's beautiful. I appreciate that. But that's the, the difference when it comes to leadership. We gotta stop attacking the people who come here to help. We just have to stop. Just say you don't wanna get involved. Cool, we, I respect the person who's like, look Reza, that ain't my lane, that's your lane. And I'm proud of you for being in that lane. I'll support by either buying a product or sharing the information, but that ain't my lane. See, I respect that. More people should get involved in doing it that way, just saying if it's your lane, if you wanna get involved that way or not. That's the best approach, rather than just wholesale attacking the people who are involved in certain lanes. That's what we should stop doing. That's why I constantly, you don't see me all over the internet, brother, attacking any of our people trying to do something, something, man. I mean, just, you, you have a number of people out here doing some good in some area, whether if it's the drug education or if it's exposing the mental health field or if it's, prostitution that they're trying to help the sisters or you know the the globalization the uh, effeminization agenda depopulation agenda. you have a lot of people in these arenas so if you're doing something good for the people i applaud you it don't matter what it is i applaud you and i support you if you are attacking any of our people who are doing good however i will say you are a clown you are a damn joke and you should stop talking because you are not involved in the mission and the thing is we have to get back in our, our mentality of understanding that the mission is still alive, we are still at war, we are not post-racial, everything isn't great now, and we're all fun and happy-go-lucky, and we don't have no trauma, drugs are a thing of the past, poverty is a thing of the past, everybody got money, everybody's healthy, everybody's family is great, everybody's out of jail, everybody, that's not the reality. Issues still exist, problems still exist, and if all these things still exist, then that means our ability to handle them has to be activated now, bro. We, we have to get up and do the work. Ain't nobody else doing it for us. And that's, that's the main thing we gotta get out of our head is waiting on somebody else to come and do it for us. And that's why a lot of folks don't even wanna lead nobody no more. Cause they're like, man, hell no. Nah. Them folks gonna kill me. If I try to get out there and tell them the right thing to do, they gonna try to attack me. I've been there before, but that's why I speak the way I do, because I don't give a damn. I only focus on those who actually want to do something, and that's the ones that I roll with. Everybody else, I don't even engage with. As long as you don't try to walk up or stop me from doing the work, we all good. 
And the thing, too, I think people that well, first of all, we we have to hold our leaders or those in a leadership position accountable. But what I'm noticing is that people don't understand the difference between accountability and criticism. Right. It just seems to be this onslaught of criticism. And if there's accountability needed, it needs to be done. But what I'm seeing is not necessarily accountability. This goes back to what you said earlier. They want to see this drama, have a story, or uh, they're big into, uh, what's the thing we call it now? Not the expose, they, uh, canceling. They want to oh, see yeah. somebody cancel. That's the thing right now, you know? Of course. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, if you want to criticize someone, like you said, the difference between holding someone accountable versus critiquing or criticizing. If you want to hold someone accountable, that's when you are insisting that they do something about what they know is wrong. Okay, you know this is wrong. I just will encourage you to do this, do that, boom, boom, boom. All right, holding someone accountable, that's a beautiful thing. Same thing with me. We all have to be held accountable when we do what is wrong or when we fail to do what is right. We should be held accountable and we should be willing as people who consider themselves being in leadership positions, in influential positions, we have to be willing to hear that and be humble, sincerely. That's point number one. Point number two, people who critique and who are always criticizing, the one thing they constantly leave out is the solution. Well, hell, if you could do better than I did, how about you tell me what I should do? Matter of fact, better yet, show me how to do it better. Why don't you get out here and do it? And that's the one thing that makes me say I am not listening to the vast majority of people. I can hear criticism. If anything is true that I need to work on, absolutely, I'm going to do that for sure. I want to make sure I'm doing right and I'm, that I'm right in everything that I do to the best of my ability. Not perfect, but man, it's best, best as I can do it. But why y'all not out here doing better than the people you're criticizing? Why aren't you doing it? Well, I don't like how you did that. Okay, well, brother, you show me. Well, no, I'm just saying, oh, then shut your damn mouth. <laughs> how about that? If you're not going to get out here and do it, brother, then please, please, rec I recommend just stop. It's like when people, they, I hear people criticizing all of our leadership. And I'm not talking about actors or athletes. I'm talking about the actual activists, the ones who did this work and have been doing this work. Anytime I hear people criticizing them, even if it's correct, even if the criticism is valid, I constantly am asking them, okay, so what is the solution? What will you have them do? Tell us. But, hey, I want to go back to what I said earlier with this, uh, this God figure and this, uh, these people looking for this um, perfect being. Mm -hmm. The criticism is like an absolute. So, for instance, now, you're doing a work, right? And you're doing a work, but there's something you dropped the ball on. Your absolute being now is this corrupted and terrible person, not focusing on the fact that, like, you just didn't do that part right. Right. Or you struggled in that part or you dropped the ball in that part. And mm -hmm. the conversation is not improving that part or accountability in that area. Your totality as a human being now, you're this terrible person. You did 99 things right, lies. one thing wrong, so everything yeah. is wrong. That right there, that whole wholesale generalization and canceling is insane. That's that's the that's that's the issue culturally within our culture. And and I, I saw a great uh, presentation by Farrakhan where he speaks about the disease, the, 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 the disease of jealousy. Yes. And I, I think jealousy plays a role in it because for whatever reason, man, like people don't want to see people progressing. I don't care what you do on fire. It's like they really don't want to see it. You know, whether it's helping True. people or hurting the community, <laughs> regardless, they don't want to see you. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the envy and jealousy is big, too, because, you know, the jealousy is, I don't like that people like you. The envy is, I wish I had what you have that makes people like you. So it's like you got envy and jealousy, which, you know, a person who is envious or jealous, they can potentially become a killer. That's where it no, goes. for serious thing, man. Yes, serious they, they, thing. they will. Like, if, if it keeps digging at them and digging at them and they keep seeing somebody who they feel is in their position or has what they feel they deserve or what they want and they don't like that you got it and they want it. You got some people who will move to that point. I've heard people on the internet with pretty large followings, supposedly followings or numbers at least, talking about people who have done this work, who have been doing this work for over 20, 30, 40 years and they're jealous of those people. I'm talking about people who are 50 years their senior 
50, 60 years older than we are, and talking about them as if they're on the same playing field because they have social media platforms. I'm like, wait, 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 hold up. Quick question. You built up a channel off of attention, not off of work. You got attention. You can get a billion views off of a video of you slapping somebody. That doesn't make you a leader. <laughs> like, it, that's not, you have a big misunderstanding on that. So the, that- Oh, Fai, I know you're talking about, man, this guy, man. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> I know you're talking about. We good. We good. Yeah, Brother, yeah. I mean, I'm like, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I'm not getting it again. So th that envy, that jealousy when it comes to leadership and that wholesale canceling, it's sad because we don't give our people any grace, no passes. And again, we come at people as if we are perfect ourselves. So you've been perfect so your whole joke. life. That's the joke of the whole thing. Damn. That's you've been perfect joke. your whole life. You never made not one mistake. But the moment somebody who you look up to or you like how they talk or they educate you, the moment they make one mistake, and I mean it can be something very small, like, like me, if I misspeak or if I mention a number or something or a date and it was incorrect, oh, see, he don't know, he don't know what he's talking about. Forget everything else I just said that was totally factual. I may have misspoke. Maybe one thing has happened before. Oh, reason know what he's talking about. Damn. Boy, I mean, no pass. Or, oh, I know he meant this, you know, our brother. I just... It baffles me, man. I, I, I appreciate the people who watch and who understand that, that we're human beings and we're doing our best. You know, we're striving our best to live out here and, and do some good work. And they give your brother a pass. Appreciate all of you who are mature, intellectual folks. The rest of y'all, look in the damn mirror. That's all I got to say. Just look in the mirror, please. And humble yourself, man. We, gotta, we, gotta, we really have to humble ourselves, sincerely. Next thing I want to talk about is that, uh, all right, so uh, Dr. Amos Wilson really inspired me to kind of add this to my life. I've been doing it for years, and so I know white people study black people, but we don't really study white people. And I can say I've really been a student of white people um, since Dr. Amos Wilson introduced me to this idea. In my observation, I think white people know more about black people than black people know about themselves. <laughs> Absolutely. Not collectively, not all white people, but you know what I'm saying. I want to be Absolutely. clear for silly people you speak about in the comment section. But mm -hmm. um, I think white people really understand the essence of black people in America, while black people still don't understand themselves and their situation in this environment. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, study the white man for he is successful and he makes no excuses for his failures. He works together in a collective manner with his people. Paraphrase slightly there. The immature person will get mad at that. The wise person will listen to that and follow those deep instructions piece by piece, point by point. Study, study. What does that mean? It means to look, it means to listen, it means to ask questions about. It means to read books about. It means to look at the history about a thing. Look at it economically, look at it spiritually, look at it mentally, look at it agriculturally. Let me study you. How did you do that? That's what they did to us. <laughs> That's all they did. Every single area of life, when it comes to our people, was studied. It wasn't just studied, it was dissected. It was carved out razor sharp accurate they dug into every fiber of exactly who we are what we are how we are when we are where we came from our abilities our powers our authority everything that deals with us and they mastered certain components of it by studying us this is not a joke again people who are intellectually lazy will hear racism in your question well white people studied us Black people don't study themselves. White people study black people more than black people study black people. That's a damn fact. That's a fact. If you were not studied, you could not have been mastered. You master that which facts. You, that you master that which no, you say study. that again. No, Rizzo, you here teaching today, bro. Say that again. No, say that again. Man. They need to hear that, man. Say that again. If we were not studied, we could not be mastered. A person who is an expert in something is someone who has studied it over and over and applied it and practiced it over and over and over again. I believe it was Bruce Lee who said, I don't fear a man 
who practices a thousand kicks one time, I fear the man who practices one kick a thousand times. So that means what you do most, you will be successful at. If you study somebody, their habits, their culture, their history, their behaviors, how they walk, how they talk, how they build, how they understand. Their psychology, bro. Brother. That's the thing Amos Wilson really put me up on, studying European yes. psychology to get a better understand why this environment is the way it is. Yes, Dr. Amos Wilson broke it down. Uh, Brother Dr. Neely Fuller in the compensatory code plan dealing with the system white supremacy, that whole book that everybody should be studying. They all were breaking it down, dealing with exactly how the playbook was laid out. The architectural blueprint of how this thing was laid out, reverse engineered it so that we can do the same thing. You were studied, so study who studied you. Simple. Oh man, you said the white man is superior. No, he's not. But his method worked. Simple as that. <laughs> you lost your knowledge. It's still working. And it's still working. You it's lost your working. knowledge. Come on, man. I, I, like, think about this. If there is a millionaire and he's white or whatever, I really don't care too much at that point. I care about the fact that you're a millionaire and I want to be a millionaire. So let me study you. See, a wise man can study. He'll sit back and learn and ask questions. I talk to people of all races, all backgrounds, all religions, all ethnicities, cultural persuasions, and I talk to them. I ask them questions. People start looking at me like, how can you say that? How do you move that way? Damn, how did you know that? Because I actually study this. I study them because I look at how the people studied us, bro. They studied us. They are the number one consumers. They studied this. They like chicken. They like watermelon. They like dancing. Hmm. They like hair extensions and nails. They like flashy cars and jewelry. Hmm. They study and what do they do? They provide the need based off of research. <laughs> they like, damn, y'all like these cars and this jewelry. Let me control the diamond trade. Let me control the large manufacturing trade of vehicles. My family will own it and I will make sure it gets provided to you because you ain't never had nothing that was too flossy, too much bling bling, and, and I'll provide it for you. And hold on, Sizzla, I mean, I said, <laughs> Rizla, anyone discrediting what you're saying right now, I want them to think about the rap industry, right? Come on. And the images you receive when videos were hot, I don't watch music videos now, but I'm a 90s dude, right? Mm -hmm. The imagery you saw in the videos and how that influenced your spending habits, whether it's through liquor, or through clothing, mm -hmm. or cars, because when Maybach came out, Maybach was a big thing, then you had the, the Range Rover was a big thing, then we had all these things, so it's like, they're targeting a certain demographic because they know what that demographic likes. Yes, it's based off of research. It's what science is, it's what scientists do. They study you. You asked a question, you said, you know, we're dealing with, well, since they studied us, should we study them? Why don't we study ourselves when they study us? They know more about us than we know about ourselves. Absolutely, the beauty is now the tide is turning, more of our people are becoming educated, more of them are studying, more of them are learning, more of them are reversing certain behaviors, certain things. More people are waking up to the system, waking up to the game, waking up to who is benefiting off of us. That's a fact, that's happening, and I'm so happy to see it in my lifetime that it is happening. However, it needs to happen Facts. more. It just has to happen more. We have to keep encouraging that. That's why you will never see your brother stopping. I'm not stopping no time soon, bro. Keep educating, keep educating, keep showing the people that we have a lot more that we have done that is good and we can continue to do good. This is quote unquote, <laughs> Black History Month. <laughs> oh man, even that right there was hilarious. Shortest month in the year and it was formerly called Negro History Week under Carter G. Woodson, but now it's called Black History Month, okay. But what are we supposed to be doing right now? Focusing more on our history, right? That, that's the, the one psychological effect I will say that, that works is because it's called Black History Month, it forces people's minds to focus more on things dealing with black history. So if you really wanna learn black history for real, study it every day, not just in this month, but study it and accept the truth about what you hear because that is what everybody else does when it comes to us. It don't matter if it's a lie or the truth. They say, well, I heard black people like this. I mean, I heard that's what you guys like. 
That's why I provided it. Well, I mean, I heard you guys eat this. That's why I provided it. I heard you guys wear this. That's why I provided it. They go off of what they study and they activate on that real quick, bro. Very quick. So we, we have to be mindful that, again, um, studying others is a successful action so that we can get back into successful actions by studying our own people. The first thing you should study is the successful people in our history who did the work and who were the most successful. Our kings, our queens, our rulers, our architects, our engineers, our scientists, philosophers, authors, builders. Study all them first, for sure. And then in a modern context, study the systems that have mastered us as well. You gotta do both. You've gotta do both. One, so you know how well we were at it. Two, so you know how well they are at it. And then three, so you know how to dismantle what they have created and then build or rebuild what we created. So it's a, it's a marriage of knowledge that we have to get involved in. All right, I want to um, touch on another topic. I was watching a previous interview you did. You made a powerful statement. Uh, you said, we will never change or end white supremacy, right? Mm -hmm. um, no disrespect to the people watching, but I don't think people, I was reading the comments in there, and I don't think people clearly understood, one, why that was such a powerful statement and what you really meant. It's a proactive statement. Absolutely. Um, can you explain to people watching what you meant by that statement? Absolutely. First thing is, we have to get out of trying to be like this system or believing that this system is superior or supreme to us, number one. Number two, the system itself is based in its ability to be superior. It only lives because of its superior positioning, not by su superior nature, by its superior positioning. It's literally where it is by keeping people underneath it. That's why I said we're never gonna end that system. So we need to establish our own. <clears throat> the point is, my making that statement was so that people could stop trying to rationalize evil, reason with wickedness, explain total devil behavior and devil mindedness and say, well, maybe if we can teach them some type of program that will help them to see us as human beings. Maybe if we marry into their society or have children with them, maybe they'll understand. Maybe the cultural sensitivity training will help them to see where we're coming from. Get this through your damn head, <laughs> okay? That is a system right over there. You need to separate from that one, build your own. Simple as that. Get out of the mindset thinking that you can rationalize and reason with an evil, wicked individual, group, culture, whatever that is, and build your own thing. Everybody else has their own thing. That's why I mentioned that. It was to make it very clear that the wrong direction is what people were going in trying to reason with this well, reason we need to get involved over there because that's the only way we're going to have power is if we go in and get the power from them. See, that's a defeatist slave master, uh, slave minded, you know, individual. The mindset of a slave is, well, I got to go to massa to become my own massa. You sound crazy as hell. You sound crazy like you. He's only massa because you're underneath him. Get from underneath him. Get your own land, your own everything. Build your own stuff. That way it's power that meets power. And power only respects power. Power don't respect nothing beneath it. All that crying and all that, that's not what the system respects. It respects the fact that when it tries to come and take stuff from you, you can blast back and be like, excuse me? You can protect yourself and they're like, oh, okay, all right, well, I respect that. Yeah. Believe in yourself and your own people. Build your own. Fund your own. That's another thing I want to mention real quick. We, if we don't fund it, we don't control it. It's another major thing I want to just bring up real quick. If we don't fund it, we don't control it. So don't complain about things that you don't control if you don't fund them. So we're always arguing about certain celebrities. Media, movies, sitcoms. Come on. Everything. Everything. We argue about these artists and celebrities not standing up but fail to support them or fund their projects or fund what they do if they do stand up. Hold on now, we can't have both of these things. Either you are gonna support a person all the way, including yourself and ourselves, or we're not. And it's just that simple. My businesses that I have self-funded and funded by the people, the people, not by the system. Never had to sell out, never had to get a check from nobody, never had to get a loan from them, never had to get a co-signer, 
from them, investors that say, well, look, if you're going to do this, I need to be a part of this. No, 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 no. By the people and self-funded, and we can do this. I've done it, and I've seen others that have done it. We have to believe more in ourselves, and really, like the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, get with those who are like-minded. Just get with the like-minded among our people. Everybody else will follow along afterwards, but just get with those who think like you and build from there, and then we can expand from that point. We have a homelessness crisis in our country. We also have a housing crisis, right? What's up with the migrant support? And we have two things going on. Major cities have a big emergence of migrant support going on. They're receiving a lot of funding and housing and other services. But at the same time, these same cities have a housing crisis for their native population. And they have a homelessness crisis going on. Have you been observing this? The homelessness has worsened so bad all throughout America. It's right in front of the White House, like right in front of the gate of the White House. There's a man who's been living in front of the White House for over 20 years who I met, same tent and everything. That man has been in front of that White House for at least four presidencies. And he has told me, I, I interviewed a man. It was right, literally right there in front of, he said, I have been here for all these years, listening to the promises. And all I see is more of my people out here, more veterans, more children, you know, emancipated minors, more prostitutes, more everything. People lost their homes, didn't have the money. The housing market, how it fluctuated, the taxes, everything is getting more expensive. And you mean to tell me after all that the people sacrificed, people that live in America, over 330 million human beings in this nation, that you're going to dole out hundreds of millions of dollars for people who just got here. The question is, what is the purpose and reason as to why the U.S. government is wholesale importing people from all these different countries? It's not just, oh, the border is not secure in Mexico. No, 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 it's not just that. They're letting it happen. Let's make this clear. They're letting this happen. And people come from all over the world, not just the continent of Africa, not just in Mexico, but tons of people coming from Europe, tons of people coming from different parts of the quote unquote Middle East but they're letting it happen. They've been busing people in to California over here in LA. They've been busing people all into Chicago. They are now paying people who just got there roughly $9,000 a month, a living wage, giving them full insurance and helping them to live. Hold on, fire, hold on. Hold Brother, on. come on, man. You said they're getting $9,000 a month? $9,000, upwards of 9,000. That's crazy, man. You not doing that for the people who've been living month? there their whole life? A month. Nine grand a month, bro. <laughs> Come on. That's a living wage. That's a real living wage. That's twice a living wage. Really? But, but where is this money coming from? That's what I'm saying. Like, if you have a population that's already there struggling, mm -hmm. where did you get this money from for other people? Exactly. Well, first off, the, the printing press has never stopped, right? So the United States Mint prints it. Federal Reserve guides it. The banks demand it. The politicians and governments demand it, and they say, we'll send money here, here, here. But the, again, the, the question is, what is the purpose? Why are they doing it? Why are they so hell-bent on providing things for people who just got here? And one thing that I believe, personally, is that because so many people in America have not complied, have been so indoctrinated, but also become so aware of the policies of their local government, the policies of the federal government, and they are looking at the fact that they don't trust the government. They're not gonna comply with certain things coming down the pipeline. But there are people who come in from the outside who believe in the American dream. They're gonna do whatever this government says. They're going to fight for them. They're going to pay whatever, do whatever this government says without question. And I believe personally that they're trying to replace not only the middle class, but even the lower class, primarily black folks, some Mexican folks, they're trying to replace them, primarily the ones who have been here is my point, with people who will comply, with people who will fight for this government because a large number of people are not going to enlist with the armed forces. So I believe they're also doing it for that purpose because a large number of people are middle-aged, or pardon me, young military age men who are coming over here, late teens, early 20s. I'm like, yo, this is, this is, uh, I mean, it's consistent. The majority of those coming over are primarily under the age of 25, military aged, 
and they're coming in wholesale. So I'm just trying to think, what are they doing this for? What is the purpose for? So I truly believe um, one side of it is for them to strengthen the numbers of the military because the military is not as strong and America is looking at another side of world war here. Because you're talking about America currently has roughly 1.4 active military. China has 2 million. So America has 1.4 million, China has 2 million. You're talking about roughly 600,000 more than this government. China has the largest standing army currently right now. China is a part of BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, they've added the United Arab Emirates, they've added Egypt, they've added Ethiopia, they've added other nations, and they are trying to now combat the United States government, the United Nations, and all of those who have been pushing these agendas. So you're talking about a cataclysmic maneuver here that is not so small or so simple. My mind is going further than this because when you're allowing people to come in wholesale into your nation with total open borders, it's not so simple as, oh, we just want to help these people and they can just seek asylum. It's not just that. There's something else behind this. And I personally, again, believe that this government is planning to increase the numbers for war. That's my personal assessment so far. I don't know if that's a fact, but that's where I, I believe it's going. Another question I had was, um I've been observing white people. It seems like they're in serious trouble because yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of white Americans are aging out. Um, the boys and the men are seem like they're giving up on life. You know, like mm -hmm. male white males are having a very hard time in this environment. We have to mention the opioid crisis. Hmm. I know they're very tender with it because white people, a majority of white people, uh, are, are dealing with it, mm -hmm. and also the change of financial status. I know this generation, like they don't, they're not able to live like their parents and they can't deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, the humility is deep now and it's a cultural thing as it transitions, as you said, less builders, less engineers, less architects, um, less persons who are dealing in trades. So less tradesmen, you know, like it, it, there, there is more so. I want to get rich on social media. I want to be an influencer. That's one side of it. Then another thing is this generation is being taken care of by the parents because they're not living, they weren't trained to live for real. Like there's not really real life skills that they have been given. So according to the white population, which we know in the majority of states are dying faster than they're being born. So you, when you said they're aging out, that's quite literal according to the United States Census Bureau. They did say that by the year 2042, white people will become the minority in America. So they're the majority currently in America, but they're going to become the minority. We know they're the minority on the planet, of course, <clears throat> but that's something that they're looking at. In 2011, I believe, maybe a little later than that, actually, 2018, either 2011, 2018, um, you know, don't quote me on the exact date on that, but there was something on CNN called the Vanishing White American. And they were doing some studies dealing with the birthing rates and the death rates of the population back then, and they were saying that they're dying faster than they're being born, there are more interracial relationships, there are less of their families duplicating, less men being born, less girls being born, et cetera. So when you're looking at this from the perspective of a conqueror, not all white people, but those who want to remain in power, you're looking at your power slipping away now, and you're looking at the fact that your boss may look like me, that your daughter may end up dating somebody looking like me. <laughs> That you really, I mean, this is just where it goes. And they got a, a lot of them, a lot of them are really, really serious and they can't stand it. And it's eaten away at them because hell, Bill Gates' daughter or granddaughter, I believe, is with a dark chocolate brother. There it is. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, you know, so it, it's, it's a serious wake up call that is taking place. And the government ain't making it no better, again, by letting all these people come in from the darker nations either because now that's switching the demographic over as well, whereas less and less white people, less European, quote unquote, and, and others who are of color or dark melanated pigmentation. So it's a real thing, brother, and it's not something that they expected because when you conquer a nation, when you steal a nation, your ancestors stole it to maintain its perpetual enslavement under their authority, not to give it back. And this is just an educational point. It's just an educational point. It wasn't stolen as a, oh, I'm just borrowing this 
for a couple you know, centuries, we're gonna give it back. No, it was, I, I plan to keep this under my control forever, and that forever is not lasting forever anymore. It's obvious now. Is upward mobility a realistic aspiration for Americans in this economic climate? Because I hear, you know, we're in this era of financial advice, right? Everyone's a financial guru and everyone's talking about this progression. But is upward mobility, was it ever a realistic aspiration for America? I feel we're in a caste system at the end of the day. You know, we don't want to acknowledge it. But I feel like wherever you're born, that's pretty much where you're going to be at when you drop dead. Mm -hmm. the, the upward mobility um, circumstance, I will say, it has been a reality but circumstantial. It depends on the individual, it depends on the arena and the avenue you're going in. Okay, real estate, sure, it depends. When you get in, where you get in, how you get in, all right. When it comes to, let's say, the trade market or Wall Street and investing, okay, when you get in, how you get in, you know, et cetera. How much you put in is how much you'll receive or get back. But the average go to school, go to college, get a job, that's not going nowhere when it comes to breaking the economic barrier to be, you know, being able to say, I have a guaranteed six figures waiting, you know, a guaranteed seven figures from this. It, the, the, the economy is so upside down now that a lot of people are not even interested in going to college. Why? Because they heard over the last four, five, six decades of people who have been in debt. Now people are hearing more about student loan debt than ever before. They're like, damn, I don't want to go to college. Let me find out another way <laughs> to get around to make this money how I, how I want to. Well, let me find out a way, like you said, the financial gurus are selling the courses and trying to help people to see, look, you can make six figures just by doing this, selling a product, doing this, or real estate, or I can get you in this market, or Bitcoin, or this. There are so many voices talking trying to give out solutions, and there are so many people trying to find solutions because they see what the economy is doing. Every damn thing is more expensive now, for less. Everything, all over the place, especially California. You're talking about California, you're talking about Miami, Florida, you're talking about certain parts of Texas. Jeez, man, it's crazy. So people are trying to live, but they're getting taxed everywhere, but then it's, they're being taught, just go the standard way that I went, and that don't work no more. It was never realistic. It was never realistic, not, not for most people, it was never realistic. So, the, so upward mobility is possible, but I would say as of now, you're gonna have to look at having at least three to four streams of income minimum, minimum. And it's however you can do that, whether if it's a stationary job, nine to five overnight, and you do something online as far as trading, investing, or if it's you sell products, or if it's you, you know, uh, do reviews. There's, there's a lot of ways to make money now. You know, there's plenty of ways, but you gotta get creative now, brother. You, you gotta get very creative. And, 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 and man, I'm glad you brought that point up because uh, with that environment comes another problem with uh, health and family structure mm -hmm. because the more stuff you have to put on is the less time you have to take care of yourself and the less time you have to put into your family. Yes. So as people are taxed, as you said, and things become more expensive and those go out to do more stuff, we're going to see more of a decline in health and mental health. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I've been through periods where I was doing a thousand things and it's not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's not a system. What do they call a hustle culture? I think that's what they call a hustle culture. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not sustainable. You know, it's not. It's unhealthy. I'll be the first one to tell you, yeah, you make some bread, but health-wise, mental health is not sustainable. We'll see that. And many people are going to go down that road, and it's not going to help, you know? Right. Well, see, that. that's where this major, overwhelming, I would say, uh, culture of anxiety is coming up all over the place now. People who have this anxiety, which is a real thing, um, and it's making it to where people, you know, anxiety meaning anxious, hard to breathe. You don't know if you're going to live the next day. You don't know if you'll live for the next hour. All these things because of overwhelming problems you have in life, overwhelming issues, trauma, this issue, that issue, my family, this, money, this, man, man, man. All these things have become so normalized now, bro, that that's why people are self-medicating. They get on all kinds of medication, all kinds of drugs. They're trying to find ways to escape. They got to watch this. They got to go here. They can't be around family. All this stuff is happening because we have been bombarded with these issues, and of course, economics has been one of the primary ones. Money issues drive up crime, we know this. 
Money issues drive up domestic violence, we know this. Money issues drive up health issues, we know this. It adds to the destruction of the lifespan. It takes years away, it ages you prematurely. We know this. So the first thing I would tell people is that they have to do their best to slow down and don't take on all your problems at once mentally. Because <laughs> people try to figure out, every, they try to figure out everything in their head all at once. Start with one problem. Figure that out the best you can. Then go to the next. That's how we have to do things is organize our thoughts. That's actually why I came up with my own solution when it comes to the brain and the nervous system because of all of what I was seeing and all these issues. And I looked at how the people are being totally overwhelmed mentally, brother, mentally. And once you get a person spiritually and mentally, you got them physically, you got them economically, you got them in every other way. But I said, I have to come up with a solution rather than just talking, you know, so I, I actually came up with something called intellectual power. And this right here, brain supplement, nervous system repair, reproductive health, immune support, all of this, 13 ingredients from the Caribbean. Brother, ain't nothing like it, intellectualpower.net. I had to come up with this, because I got tired of just talking. I, uh, you, you linked up with the priest. The priest gave, yeah. you some, uh, gave you some lessons on that. Hey, brother, <laughs> man, look, I've been out there in them islands, brother. <laughs> I've been in the islands. See, and, and, and I gotta mention this too, because there's always this divide between you know, black people in America versus those on the continent. You know, Africans on the continent. Black people in America versus those in the Caribbean. It's always these arguments and these fights. And there are some legitimate arguments, you know, don't get it twisted. But then again, there's a lot of business being conducted among us as well. I am one of those who chose to do business with our people. You know, here, first of all, in America, and then those across the islands and the continent, because I'm looking at if our enemies can agree to do things that go towards removing power from us, then I for damn sure can agree to come together with my own people here in America, across the continent, the islands, et cetera, to do business that will help us as a people. That's what I decided to do. So I'm not in that, the argument with this nonsense. I'm like, look, it's 2024. Um, when I have children, I want them to live. I want them to be healthy. I want my people to be healthy. I want them to live. This system cannot be trusted. We can complain about it all day long, or we can come together, organize, unite, build business, build solutions that help. And I just chose health because that's what I'm passionate about. And that's also what's being attacked heavily mentally because the mental health is messed up, messed up. And of course, physically right after that. So again, as I said, and this is something again, brother, I'll make sure you get your bottle as well. This right here, the testimonies already from this right here, trust and believe. And this is not selling, I'm providing a solution, like I said, because I kept traveling this country and the world looking at all the issues, hearing the issues, and getting really embarrassed at the fact that I didn't have something that I can offer right then and there. You see what I'm saying? Like I can. It's like, well, we can point at other people who may have some solutions and all that, but I can put my name behind this. I can put my reputation and I can for sure say, I know every component, every ingredient, and I can stake my life on what I'm behind. I can do that. Now, I can't do that for everything. Intellectualpower.net, get yours, and you let me know how it works for you. Because all of the, uh, the testimonies that I've been seeing, brother, are people saying not only how it helps them mentally, but with their energy, their sleep, the immune system, all of this stuff that is being attacked. So this system is not done yet, brother. They, they absolutely have more viruses coming out. They're gonna push a lot more negative. And what are we gonna do? Just keep talking about it, keep educating, keep telling the people how wicked the government is, we know that. Keep telling them how they're gonna come out more viruses, more manipulated food, more genetically modified this, more this, more that. Okay, we can keep talking about that all day long, cool, cool, yes, I know. But do you have a damn solution that can help me to combat and fight against that? No, then we gotta stop talking. Brother Reese Islam has one. I have my own, at least. Can you, can you share some of the ingredients in that for us? I'll mention just a few that most people probably have never heard of. Sensitiva is one of them, also known as touch me not. 
I believe in, in Jamaica and other parts of the Caribbean, they refer to as that it's a living plant, so much so that when you touch the plant, the leaves close. So that is one of those primarily helpful when it comes to the reproductive system, as well as the immune system, as well as the nervous system. Another one, of course, is patchouli, which is known to be anti-anxiety, anti-depressant, uh, and of course, um, uh, helps with the immune system as well. Very good. People know patchouli mainly you know, for the oil, the smell, etc. but it's also very, very good for the body. And one more that I will mention, this one is a pretty, pretty good, I would say as far as uh, well known, is soursop. And soursop, of course, anti-cancer, you know, it helps with sleep, it helps with reproductive health as well. And of course, um, boosting the immune system, especially with the leaves. And we use, by the way, every part of the plant, not just the leaf, but the actual root, the entire plant, pure herbs. Um, there are no mushrooms, just gotta mention that because a lot of people think brain health, they think mushroom, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not in that arena, um, but you know, the earth provides everything that we need. And so I decided to go toward that area because again, people tell me all the time, brother, how do you remember this stuff, man, your mind, you're this, you're sharp, sharp, okay. If I want the people to be able to do that as well, and I know that their health is primarily why they're not able to access that, recall that, have the energy, the memory and all that, then I have to provide something that helps with that. It's just that simple. I, I, I got tired of talking, brother. It's been over 20 years that I've been doing this work. And the main thing that I'm looking at now is more solutions for our people. It's 2024. One thing that I'm looking at when it comes to the greatest among our leaders are those who provided solutions, tangible, physical solutions, whether if it was economics, whether if it was agriculture, when it comes to food, whether if it was clothing and shelter, security, medical care, whatever it is, we have to provide solutions that we can trust among our people that are good quality that we can trust. Other than that, I'm not interested in just talking anymore by itself. I'm interested in educating, but also providing solutions right after that. That's what I'm on. Um, learned helplessness occurs when an individual continuously faces a negative, uncontrollable situation and stops trying to change their circumstances, right? Mm. Even when they have the ability to do so. Do you believe many of our brothers and sisters suffer from learned helplessness? And how do our people unlearn learned helplessness? There's something called the fight or flight response. In psychology, they know that a person will either succumb or give in to an attacker, or they're going to fight against an attacker. A lot of our people, due to the heightened amount of trauma, have learned to simply give in and be defeated. It has become a learned pattern. Of course, we know during slavery is something we had to accept it. Like you, they had the gun on us, they had the whip next to them, they had all these layers of fear. It's primarily fear-based, fear-driven. The fear of losing money, the fear of losing family, the fear of losing this, the fear, 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 to where we just give in and we choose not to fight back anymore. On top of that, you have social media bombarding you with negative news, negative news, negative news all day. Then you have another thing, social media bombarding you with another divorce, another divorce. This person died, that person died. Whoop, this person lost a lawsuit. Oh, this person, all this losing, loss, 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 you know, negative, negative, negative. When you get that into a person's mind on a chain or a command, to where all they hear is negative, 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 losing, no winning, no positive, no success, then what happens in the mind? All you think is, well, if I try to stand up, I'll lose. If I try to fight back, I'll lose. If I try to build, I'll lose. And they always bring up what? They'll say, well, the Panthers got destroyed. Well, you know, this happened to Malcolm X. This happened to Martin Luther King. Man, if I stand up, man, if I fight back, man, I, <laughs> I just be thinking like, so we should all just give up, right? Just give up, that's it? Just bring up the only examples you hear about and you say, well, look how their life ended. Well, first off, there are plenty of people who are still alive today, by the way, who have been fighting back, who have been standing. Let's make that clear. Number two, who the hell cares if somebody lost? This is your life we're talking about. What do you wanna do? Yes, we can learn to get out of this self-defeat type of mentality. We can learn that. You have to inspire the people though. The only thing that's gonna change it, brother, like I said before earlier in this interview, more examples of us winning, promoting the examples of us standing up and winning, promoting the example of us fighting back and winning, building business and it succeeding, collaborating, uniting, and it being fruitful and powerful. Like we, we gotta promote that. That's why, again, I'm, I'm not, I will not get out here and generalize and attack our people. 
You never gonna hear Brother Reza saying that. If you ever hear that, that ain't Brother Reza. I don't know who the hell that is, that ain't me. Because I have to promote the idea that it is possible, and it is, that we can work together and be success successful. It happens that black businesses are successful. Everybody on my team is black. From our web designer to my product managers, my booking agent, everybody is black. We work very well together, black men, black women. You see what I'm saying? Like, we promote that and brag about that. Oh, it ain't gonna be that successful. I give it two more months. I don't give a damn what you gotta say. You keep your self defeated, weird, weak, punctified, Mickey Mouse milk toast mentality to your damn self. But don't come over here and try to, you know, kick down our success. No. Clap, applaud, and be happy at the fact that you have some of your people really building. The other thing I'll mention is brag about building and being successful at it, but don't promote all the moves you're making. Now, I would say there's an art to this thing because we're still dealing with this system now. We still have a very real system, a very real enemy, and also some very real people who are envious and jealous as well among our own. So you have to learn how to navigate wisely. You get what I'm saying? Navigate wisely, um, but don't be afraid to stand up and do what's right. Don't be afraid to build and promote the fact that, again, like I said, we can, people promote too often, I'll just say when it comes to relationships, they'll promote too often that, oh, he beat me, but I stood tall, I'm still here, okay? Or the man will say, she tried to take everything from me, but I'm still here. Okay, how about this? The system destroyed our entire people, yet we are still here. Take that and use that to build whatever it is you got going. Whatever that goal is, make it happen. That business, start it. That team of people you wanna work with, build with them, do it. Stop being afraid, make it happen. Go for it and don't listen to no damn body who was giving you negative information all the damn time trying to prevent you from going towards what you know is something good. Keep pushing through and find the right people. Get with those who are like-minded. And again, brother, like you said, we can reverse this and unlearn it. We absolutely can. I saw something on social media. You were at a revolt panel. Seemed like you were firing some shots there. Um, who were those shots targeted at, bro? Because I, I see you got a little fiery up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, which, which video? When? Because I'm trying to think. It was, um, I saw it on, I don't, I, I take it it was recently. So I'm not sure if it was end of 2023 or even this year, but it was a panel with you. It was one brazier up there. I tried to, my best oh, not to say Oh, the Revolt name. Summit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was a Revolt Summit. You know what's interesting? I had a few people in mind. I had a few people in mind. I had people in the quote unquote conscious community in mind. I had a lot of rich artists and celebrities in mind. A lot of them, uh, black ones. Right, a lot of those in mind, and I had some athletes in mind, and even a few people in quote unquote leadership from the Christian church, from this group, from that group. My frustration was with the fact that I have done my best thus far to be an example by following the example of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and Mosanib Elijah Muhammad, Brother Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, like looking at the best of them and following their example. I only became slightly frustrated with holding back correcting a number of our people who refused to stand up and who refused to do what is right. So that's why I didn't name any names, but I had a number of people in my damn head. I had a lot of people. And if I would have said something, they couldn't do a damn thing about it. That's my biggest point. Because when you have somebody who loves you for real, and they see that what you're doing can potentially go against the mission. Again, I'm always going to go back to the mission, which is the overall survival of us as a people. If some of us are stepping out of line, and we're doing things that are going to prevent us from being successful or are going to probably set us back by a few years, we have to go at that person, sit them down, correct them and say, look, brother, sister, what you're doing is not beneficial to the collective. We don't need to hear that, well, I'm gonna do me and I do this and y'all separate and we this. You can say whatever the hell you wanna say. You represent us whether you like it or not. Chinese folks are not out here just saying and doing whatever the hell they want to say and do because they people gonna get at them. 
Indians from India are not just out here saying whatever the hell they want to say and do because their people are going to get at them. We got to get back into that mentality of we as a people. We're not a monolith. Yeah, we don't all believe the same. But what we do is we want food, we want clothing, we want shelter. All right, we have families. We want to survive. Okay, so that means represent to the best of your ability. But this individualism is a sick problem that really the system injected by giving us money and by propping a few of us up and pulling a few of us up, you know, and making us look like we are in a position that is attainable. That kind of stuff is where this tribalism and arguing and all that comes from. I'm not in that. So I wanted to go down a list of names that day. That was at the Revolt Summit, brother. I wanted to go down. I'm talking about a list. I wanted to start at the top and just <laughs> and, and call them all out. But I know that that will not bring about the desired result that i know it will probably Fine, that's, more that's not doing that. nothing that's not doing nothing but creating drama you know a private phone call or you yes, may have to check yes. in person you yes know? so so even no, me serious thing even me I, I battled you know i battled with that but again it was successful you know it the message got out and i didn't have to name any names because you know when you start doing things publicly that's when you you're hitting people's character or they feel like you're coming at them you know and so and that's not how i am regardless i'm not that kind of guy um, that kind of brother, but I wanted to get as much publicly addressed without bringing up certain names. That way, whoever it applied to, they could feel it because they know where I'm coming from and they know how I'm coming. So if they get out here and do it again, I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna pull up if I can, if I have contact with them, um, because we're no longer on that time, bro. We, we, we can't be on the selling out mentality time, this individualistic time, this I'm attack my own time. We have to kill all of that. That has to go. Yeah. If we want to survive, we have to get rid of that. Like we, we really do, as, as hard as it may be or difficult as it may be, we have to get rid of it for the sake of the survival of the people as an overall. That's why I did that. So yeah, I, I for sure have people in mind, brother. No, nah, Rizzo, man, we give thanks for the time. We give thanks for the, the, uh, the teachings. We give thanks for the work. Um, round two here, I Never Knew TV. And can you let the people know where they can reach you? Because you're always banned, you yeah. know, or shadow banned. <laughs> if you're not banned, you're shadow banned. If you're not shadow banned, they're not showing you stuff. Because mm -hmm. I remember I was trying to uh, just put you in a, a, a story fight, and it's a big message, you know, a warning and all that. So it's pretty wild. So the thing is real yeah. out there on RZA. But um, let the people know where they can find you and also where they can find your product. And also let the people know about your book, too. I don't think a lot of people – know about your book like that, like this Absolutely. new generation, because you're always getting new people into you. So let them know about the, uh, your book also. Absolutely. The main thing is you can find me at RezaIslam.com. I recommend everyone go there and subscribe to the email list. And you put your number in, your name, your email. Uh, that way, whatever it is that I'm doing, wherever I'm at, you'll get the email blast and you'll always stay updated. That's the first thing. Number two, I want you to go to intellectualpower.net. And that is for the brain supplement here. We already sold out last month within the first week. So if I were y'all, I'll go ahead and make sure you get yours. Intellectualpower.net, 13 ingredients, non-GMO, organic, wild-crafted, non-radiation or no radiation, no heavy metals, vegetable capsules, glass for maximum preservation, you name it, black produced, black source, black owned, you already know how we do. Uh, so make sure you go to intellectualpower.net to get yours and also subscribe to the letter there. Also, Instagram, Reza Islam IX for now. It looks like they, you know, may let your brother ride. I don't know. For now, <laughs> Instagram is Reza Islam IX, but stay close to RezaIslam.com just in case. Um, Twitter, Elon Musk, let your brother back on Twitter. Uh, we appreciate that. Still don't trust him, but we do appreciate that. Uh, my Twitter is Reza Islam, and the other one is at Islam Reza. And I believe we're Reza Islam on Facebook. Facebook, let your brother back on. I went from 35,000 followers to 210,000 within a matter of, I think, the last 90 days once people found that That's they unlocked true. it. Cool, cool. Yeah, so Reza Islam on Facebook. And I think that is it as of right now as far as social media. I'm on TikTok as well, Reza Islam, uh, I believe IX2. See how that goes. So Reza Islam, make sure you search up everything and you know I should pop up. But just know, uh, whatever it is that I can do for the people, I will do. I'm working on a number of solutions, my brother. I'm talking about when I say my mindset is switched far more into tangible, physical 
solutions, I, I, I cannot um, say that enough. That's really where, you know, I am for the majority. And of course, our brother did mention, and I will um, oblige our brother, RezaIslam.com to get your copy of Message to the Millennials, which was inspired by Message to the Black Man by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It is the more modern form dealing with the technological side, dealing with the governmental side of things, dealing with all that, well documented, a lot of facts that you will see in there, and I believe it's gonna help a lot of people. Um, many people are calling it the handbook for this generation. So, ReasonIslam.com for that. And uh, yeah, my brother, always honored to be a part of the reasoning in the building. I Never Knew TV is a powerful platform, and I, of course, am honored to come on. I appreciate how you handle these conversations, and the people say the same thing. So y'all drop love in the comments for the interviewer, <laughs> for our brother, and support the channel, because it is, you know, you don't see me everywhere. It's because I turned down most interviews, but this one, this is a, a place where I feel comfortable and I feel like it is, you know, reciprocated. The brother's a good brother, it's a good platform, and I believe it deserves your support.